fountain, a ball hit by a batsman for six, or a bullet coming out of pistol. All have this equation in common. This simple equation. Well, I know it might not look that simple for you right now, but I promise you at the end of this video, you'll be able to crack it, understand it and apply it. So as usual, let's start with something very basic. Here we have X, Y plane. A ball is kept at origin and it is moving in the first quadrant like this. It moved from origin to some point A in the first quadrant. Let's say the length of OA is L. Now, if you have been given that the ball is traveling from origin to point A in time T, what is its velocity? Simple, displacement by time, right? But if you see at X coordinate and Y coordinate of this ball, how that is changing. In this particular time, when the ball is moving from O to A, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate has changed to L cos theta and L sine theta. Right? You know the basic trigonometry. If we have been given that angle AOB is theta, X has changed from 0 to L cos theta and Y has changed from 0 to L sin theta. So what you observe here is there is a change in two coordinates related to the motion of this body or related to the position of this body, right? And this type of motion where there is a change in two coordinates related to the motion of the body is called a two dimensional motion. All right. Now, if we go further and look at the velocity or look at the variation of X coordinate with time, how we can say rate of change of X coordinate is L cos theta by T, right? In the same time, as the body is going from origin to A, the X coordinate is changing from zero to L cos theta. And that is why rate of change of X coordinate is L cos theta by T. So we can write U cos theta. Let's say L by T is U, then we can write L cos theta by T as U cos theta. In a similar way, rate of change of Y coordinate is L sine theta by T. In the same time, y coordinate is changing from 0 to L sine theta, right? So the velocity of change of y coordinate is u sine theta, correct? So this is all about like how the velocity is changing in x and y. If you know the resolution of vector, then you can say that if there is a velocity u in some direction, we can resolve it simply right like this we can say that horizontal component of the velocity is u cos theta and the vertical component is u sin theta very simple all right let's say we have a ball and someone threw it in air what path is it going to follow somewhat like this right now imagine four other points on this path and if we bring in X and Y axis here, how will the coordinates vary? At position A, the coordinates are X1, Y1. For example, at position C, it will be X3, Y3, which is all the way different from the coordinates of position A or position B, right? That means there is a variation of X coordinate and y coordinate during this motion both the coordinates are varying correct which means this motion can be categorized under two dimensional motion right now if you have been given that ball has an initial velocity of u you can quickly resolve it right if 
the initial velocity is making an angle theta with horizontal the horizontal component of velocity will be u cos theta and the vertical component will be u sin theta correct now let's bring in a table here in x direction the initial velocity is u cos theta in y direction the initial velocity is u sin theta right we know that till now now comes the acceleration when the ball is in air which force is acting on it i am asking you which force is acting on it very simple only and only gravitational force right when the ball is in air no other force is acting only gravitational force is acting on the ball which is vertically downwards so what we can say there is no other acceleration acting on the body in any direction other than gravitational attraction or gravitational acceleration right which is in y direction so in x the acceleration is zero in y direction the acceleration is g which is vertically downwards now this kind of two dimensional motion which is happening in effect of gravity or gravitational force is called projectile motion so now we know that both the x coordinate and y coordinate related to this ball are changing right how it is changing focus on y coordinate what is the y coordinate at origin zero what is the y coordinate at final position of the ball zero right so y coordinate is changing from zero to its maximum and then back to zero correct how is x coordinate changing from zero to its maximum coordinate at the final position x coordinate is maximum right but both the changes are happening in the same time right let's visualize what is happening the time for which the ball is in the air is called the time of flight you can say it is the time for which the ball is flying actually it is not literally flying but we say it like that all right now during this time both the coordinates are changing somewhat like this the x coordinate is changing from 0 to maximum and y coordinate is changing from 0 to maximum and then back to 0 right so we can see that there is a change in x coordinate as well as y coordinate while the body is in motion right or in other words during the motion there is a change in position along both the axes so can't we separate the axes and analyze the motion like this yes what you have to do is just imagine a ball moving along x axis and there is another one which is moving along y axis just imagine it like this but both of them are completing their motions in the same time correct now let's calculate a few parameters keeping these two motions in mind so first parameter is maximum height what is the maximum height attained by the ball so we have two diagrams here in the right one we can mark the maximum height as this right and if we shift it to the x and y axis we can say the maximum y coordinate is actually the maximum height right so let's calculate that let's focus on y axis here we already know that initial velocity in y direction is u sin theta right and we have an acceleration of g which is acting vertically downwards now can we apply an equation of motion here yes v square is equal to u square plus 2 as a very well known equation of motion now here is a question for you let's say this is a point of maximum height what will be the velocity of ball at this point 
zero, right? Whenever we throw something vertically upwards, the velocity at maximum height is always zero. So we can place v as zero here, right? Let's do that. Zero is equal to u sine theta square minus two g h. Why this minus? Because acceleration is acting in a direction opposite to the motion of ball, right? And that is why we have to place a negative sign in front of g. Now, if we arrange it, we get h is equal to u square sine square theta by 2g. This is the formula for maximum height of the projectile. Now, let's take on another parameter. Now, we have to calculate time of flight. What is that? The time for which the ball is in the air. And during that time, the y coordinate is changing from zero to maximum and then maximum to zero. You already know that, right? So if we apply this equation of motion, s is equal to ut plus half at square, what we will place in the place of s. The displacement is like this. In y direction, the initial and final position are same. So what is the displacement? Zero, right? So the expression will be zero is equal to u sine theta t minus half g t square. Again, this negative sign for the same reason. Now, if we arrange it, we get t is equal to two u sine theta by g. And this is the time of flight. This is the time for which the ball is in the air. Now, what is happening in x direction? We have an initial velocity of u cos theta, right? And this velocity is not going to change for whole motion. Why? Because there is no acceleration in horizontal direction. And that's why there will be no change in velocity in horizontal direction, right? Now, let's say the ball is covering a distance r in x direction. How we can write the expression? r is equal to u cos theta into t. As there is no acceleration, we can simply apply the formula distance is equal to speed into time. Right? And what is the time? We have already calculated it. t is equal to 2u sin theta by g. And if we place it in this expression, we get something like this r is equal to u square 2 sine theta into cos theta by g. Here is the trigonometry involved. From the basic trigonometry, we know that 2 sine theta into cos theta is sine 2 theta. And if we convert it, we get a formula. r is equal to u square sine 2 theta by g. And this formula is the formula for range. What is range? Range is the maximum distance covered by the ball in x direction. Or you can say the maximum x coordinate if the ball is starting from origin. All right. So we have got three formulas. They are for maximum height. H is equal to u square sine square theta by 2g. Time of flight t is equal to 2u sine theta by g and the range which is u square sine 2 theta by g. Right? Hope you got it. Now further, let's increase the level. Here you have been given a path of projectile in xy plane and you have been told that after some point of time t, the ball was at this position x comma y. What you can conclude from this. You can say that the displacement in vertical direction is y and in horizontal direction is x after that duration. Right? Can you write the equations of motion for here? Right? It will be y is equal to u sine theta t minus half g t square and x is equal to u cos theta into time t. You are very capable enough now to write these equations. If we substitute the value of t from second equation to first, 
we will get a formula which is the equation of trajectory the equation of path of projectile and this is the formula this is the equation with which we started the video the water droplet coming out of fountain the ball hit by a batsman and the bullet coming out of pistol all of them are following the trajectory of projectile and that is why they are following this equation this equation is actually the relation between x and y coordinate at any point of motion right now there can be many cases of projectile motion especially the third one whenever you are solving the problems of projectile motion in physics there will be many problems for the third case what is this case if you are giving an initial velocity to a body at an angle of 0 degree with horizontal there will be a horizontal component of the velocity but no vertical component all right remember that so you have to follow two steps break the motion in two one dimension motions all right and the second step is apply the equations of motion independently for both the axes that's it now here is a question for you there are two balls kept at same height one of them is being dropped and the other one has been given a horizontal velocity and they are following a path like this now if you are being said that the red one is taking time t1 and the blue one is taking time t2 to touch the ground the relation between them is t1 is equal to t2 how and why it looks like t2 should be greater than t1 but t1 is equal to t2 how you have to solve it and drop the answer in the comment box now if this video looks interesting to you just like share and subscribe and hit the bell icon for any queries you can drop a mail at slidescreen@gmail.com